to Too much that I've been through So I put it all in that rear view Clean money in a black whip Short intro today. My name is Dylan. This is a transition sound design breakdown. Let's get it. Also, <laughs> maybe this is uh, more of an intro than I thought. This is a trailer that I made for Motion VFX. It was a client of mine and it is mainly all transition sound effects. So let's listen to it and watch it first and then I'll kind of go through how I set it up and stuff like that. Just too quick for it, peeling off like the whip orange. Seen the effort, this piss poor. I got too much, I gotta tend to. Car payments and a rent due. Told y'all that I'm six foot, but with the money stamming, I'm ten to. Too much that I've been through, so I put it all in that rear view. Clean money in a black whip. Got old problems with a friend's new. Yeah, I'm in the big leagues. Falling don't miss me. Falling like Houston. Ayy, feeling like Whitney. Yeah, I need a bag, bruh. Send it through quickly. I'm making his dog. Like I'm in a big loop. That song bumps. I, I love that song. Right when I heard it, I was like, yes, this is the one. And it fits the, the transitions perfectly. So let me expand these, uh, these audio clips so we can see the waveforms a little bit better. And so for me, if you don't know how to cut to the beat, it's whatever point you would bob your head on, kind of. So if we listen to this, let me go in my index and I'll mute everything but the music. I'll close that and just listen to this. Right? Just too quick for it. And you also can go on the offbeat too. So when it's this one's a little bit harder because it's kind of a fast-paced song, but if it hits on duh, then you can go like halfway in between that next beat. Just a tip, I know this is obvious to some, but I have noticed that a lot of people have issues with cutting to the beat. Now let me turn off the music and I'll leave everything. I'll leave the sound effects as well as what I call direct effects. So if you have someone that's, for example, we have this, uh, this go-kart on the dunes. To me, that's a direct sound effect. Any sound effect that we can see, we should be able to hear. I put that in, into this category. And if you don't know how to set this up in Final Cut Pro, I don't know if it's the same in Resolve or Premiere, you would just uh, right click, you do assign audio roles, edit roles, and then from here you can add an audio role, you can label it whatever, and then you just apply by right clicking again, assign, and then choose. So, you have that, I have ambient sound effects, like for example, this traffic in the background, which we will listen to, as well as the effects. So let's listen to it without the music, and you'll notice that, I'll just play it out instead of, instead of chatting so much. So do you hear how almost you could just go without music? And that is that is adding layers and building your sound environment apart from the music. And that's really gonna help you to create a full sound that mixes well with the music. And so think about a couple things when you're creating sound design and specifically transition sound design. You wanna have it accent the music as best as possible. So for example, on those hits, is when obviously you would make the cut, add a transition or have an in-camera transition and you'd add some type of effect here. So let's go to, I'll just go down the line and we'll go to this. So watch, let me mute this by pressing V and just watch this transition. Let me mute that as well. Right, so this transition, you would think there would be some type of sputtering sound and that's something you can think about depending on what transition you're using and how it looks. Imagine what sound would come from that, even if it's super creative and odd. So for example, here, if I unmute these, let me turn off the direct sound effects, which is just the, the driving. I'll mute that and we'll add these.
Here's another, another tip for you. For example, if you have a transition that's going up, ideally you would want to find a sound effect that sounds like it's kind of rising or building and that kind of tricks your mind into thinking that it's one, that the, the sound effect was recorded in camera with the transition. It somehow tricks your mind. So for example, here I have this, I think it's from our list, it's like a whooshing riser if you listen to it. It's almost going up, let me, right? And so that's a way that you can add sound effects to transitions that are moving in a certain direction, I guess only up and down. You can have those sound effects kind of emulate that movement. And then you'll notice that I didn't just add one sound effect for each transition. Like I mentioned, if you layer your sound effects and add a bunch of different types, it's gonna help to make the whole thing sound more full and rich. So for here, obviously we have the skateboarding sound effects, but if I mute some of these or just uh, isolate them by pressing option S in Final Cut Pro, but just listen, right? So we have this suck back glitch sound. Whoops. Right, so both play with each other really well. So let's take this. So if I zoom in here, so I have a couple things going on for this shot. I have factory noise in the background, which is something that you really don't hear, but it helps to add that, that sound environment, it helps to make it a little bit more full. It's almost like a, a layer underneath that helps to build it. You hear that? It's there. And then something else that you sh could keep in mind is that you can also get very creative with sound effects. And this is actually, I think, why I like sound design. Sound design is one of my favorite parts of filmmaking is because you can add totally random sound effects to different parts of your film and they will often work. Whether you have to retime them or change the pitch, it helps to, it, it makes it fun. It makes filmmaking fun in my opinion. So for example, here, I, we have this sound, this transition that's kind of like sputtering across. And so all I did along with a few whooshes and stuff like that is add this ratchet sound effect, right? So it's little and minor, but then added with this whole little bit here, right? It helps a lot. Oh, I also added this too. So quite a lot's going on there. And then here we have a lot going on. I have like, for example, a welder sound effect. So that's me just like looking up sound effects and like, will this work? Could it possibly work based on the visuals of the transition? And absolutely, it's a welder. It's like kind of a glitchy sound effect, which goes well. Here we have a, like a sci-fi whoosh that goes well with this transition. And also you can tweak your shots and or transitions to help sound effects fit a little better. So for example, this shot, it, it's, not rot it's not a rotating shot. I made it rotate just by using my transform tools and, and, uh, and having it spin on me. And then obviously, because it looks like a clock, you have this guy that looks like the hands of a clock. It's kind of rotating like a clock would. That really helps to, to add to it. Just add a little clock noise and then it kind of cuts across, so you would need something to punctuate that change from shot one to shot two. So I have actually a couple things here. If I iso isolate all of these, I think that's it. Let's listen. Right, so we have a, a, a riser. This is actually my favorite riser that I have, and it just kind of comes up and then leaves a nice, like almost like fairy dust in the background. We have a, a suction whoosh riser. Right, a record scratch, and that just kind of helps to signify it's a change in not only the shot, but this is a change in the music as well. Just too quick for it, pulling up. Right, it's when the beat drops. Just too quick for it, pulling up by the whip. So that helps a lot, I think. So besides adding some type of ambient sound effects, which is just a, a standard part of sound design, when you are creating transitions, like I mentioned, try and stack and layer. You would wanna keep them at a lower level because that's gonna prevent peaking like I have going on here. I added way too much. So try and start your transition, your sound effects in general 
at negative 12 or lower. And then from there, if it's too quiet, then you can raise those certain sound effects that you would like to be a little bit more prominent. So let me mute all of these. So I, obviously you have a, a boom box here. So I found, I just typed in radio into the sound effects in Fonica Pro. And so you got this going on, right? And it almost sounds like it's rising too, which is great because like we mentioned, this shot is dollying in, it's pushing forward. And then you have this change, this, this transition here almost looked to me like it was changing channels. So I had a changing of the channel sound effect. And something you can do if you have a really like loud set of transition sound effects is when it moves to the next shot, just cut all the sound. And you'll see this in movies a lot. Even when it's not a intense moment, they will have like a buildup of sound and then cut into the next shot. And that next shot may have like a little bit of rever reverb that extends on through the shot. Like it almost, it, it punctuates that that shot change or it has a hit in between those two shots. So for example, with this, from this radio shot to her. So I put it all in that rear view, clean money in the black. Right, so it has almost a build and then just then nothing. And that helps a lot, I think. And then you'll notice I even added, I even added gym sound effects in the background because once again, Layering is going to help to make that sound design sound so much fuller and richer. Right, you have more glitch sound effects. Um, a lot of these, for I just played out different things that I liked. Like, this is very quiet. Whoops. Just a light radio change added with a film sound effect. I know a lot of you are probably screaming at the computer or have been trying to ask me where I get my sound effects from, and I get them from a lot of different places. I get a lot from YouTube, which are free, so if you just like search cinematic transition sound effects, you can find a lot there. I get some from Artlist, some from audio. There's a website called SoundSnap, which has a, a lot of really quality sound effects that you can find, that you can find specific sound effects on SoundSnap that'll fit your project. It's a little more expensive, but to me it's worth it, especially for bigger projects. So I added this film sound effect, right? I think I got this from a pack called Cinepax. It's a really great overlay pack and has obviously some solid sound effects as well. Right, we have a little whoosh and then we have a suck back sound. And then all together, this is what it sounds like. Right? And that just plays with the transition. You got this picture frame rolling, so you know there's gonna be, th there should be some type of filmic sound effect. It's also very sputter, sputtery <laughs> is not a word. Study, stuttering, it's, it stutters. <laughs> Oh, it's morning, cut me some slack. So it just kind of like goo, 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 goo. And so you know it would have kind of a, a choppy sound effect. And then you want to punctuate the end of that transition with some type of hit, some type of suck back sound like I did here. Same with this one. This one is like a, another sputtering. That's a word, I'm, I'm not crazy. And that comes across really nice. You just have a simple glitch. This one, you got radios in the shot. Your mind may or may not see that. And so just adding that in will help to, to make you think that it's actually part of the shot. Something I like here that I did was I specifically put her in this shot because in the song he goes, Falling like Houston, hey, feeling like Whitney, yeah. Feel like Whitney, I don't know, she looks a little bit like Whitney Houston. It just made more sense for me to put her here than him. Hey, feeling like Whitney. Yeah, Here's another one I can do. Let me mute this by pressing V. Okay, so here, this is a change in the music, right? So if we listen to this. Feeling like Whitney. Yeah, I need a bad bro. So it's a kind of that silence while he says I need a bad bro and then it hits to the beat again. So there you want to add something more with your transitions to once again help help ride with that music. So let's mute it, press V again. So you start to hear this riser, right? 
we got a couple things going on. The two th sound effects that are acting like risers uh, is this fairy sparkle riser whoosh as well as this reverse bass drop. So you got two ends. You got the high, the treble, and the bass, and both together make kind of a full riser. Boom. Right, and you obviously gotta put the peak or the, the climax, if you will, of those two sound effects <clears throat> right when it switches. Because if I just pull these off, no, doesn't work. Okay, and then let's see what else I added. Some stuttering, and that's because like a lot of these transitions, you have a lot of stuttering in between those bright, flashy, grainy frames. By the way, this transition sound effect pack is probably one of my favorites that Motion VFX has ever made. And I am not just saying that because I do work for them. It is truly a beautiful pack. Okay, so we added the sputtering. We added another something to punctuate it, like a, a suck back sound, as well as something else to help with that sputtering graininess kind of like the walkie-talkie kind of static. And that's another example of getting creative. I just searched static or maybe maybe I searched walkie-talkie in my sound effects folder and just found something. I was like, yeah, that could play. And then here I did the same thing I did before. I cut to silence and that also left some room to have more ambient sound effects like the seagulls that come into play. You see the seagulls, you would expect to hear a sound and we do. Right? We don't hear him doing pull-ups, but you could have. You could have heard, I could have put in maybe like a grunting sound effect as he does a pull-up. All right, here we got a couple different sound effects. We got the radio, we got the whoosh, a couple different whooshes. And together they, they sound great. So I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is they think, I'll just add one whoosh or one glitch sound effect or whatever, and they think they're done. But if you add more layers, I promise you, it's gonna sound way better. And think about how that plays off in the music. Think about how you can accentuate the music with those sound effects. Like I'm in a big Obviously, you gotta have the, uh, the basketball dribbles and you gotta time those up right. You, you don't want it to be off. All right, and here, here's another little lesson. You know the end is coming. And uh, that sounded very bleak. <laughs> you know the end of the video is coming. And so you would want to have a sound effect that leads up into that end. So this one, you know, we've had some suckbacks, some, some risers. You want to have a longer riser here that starts to build and that kind of like gets the audience like anticipating something. And that's where you can hit them with the boom, M transition noise. That's where you hit them with the title. And that helps accentuate that ending to where you're like, oh, oh, sh <laughs> I cuss a lot in, in person, not on YouTube, because I think YouTube doesn't like that. Okay, you got the build, right? And I think it's just this sound effect. Yep, we have a power down sound effect is like a bass drop and that you put that right at the end of the riser and that kind of leads out into the silence. So if we listen to just these two, I'll press C, which for most people in Final Cut, it's option S if you haven't customized that. Right, oh, it's a little bit after that hit. Boom. It's very, very quiet, right? Just like a hit and then uh, a nice bass drop. Let me run through some of the points that we went over. Try and layer your sound effects as much as possible, even with transitions, because having those different sounds and, and different octaves and pitches is gonna help that transition to sound a lot better. And then also, use those transition sound effects to accentuate the music. So like we did with that radio portion, how it switches to like a pause and then to a different part of the beat, cut the transition so it follows that music and then start up again with those transitions when that beat happens again. Also, when you're layering those sound effects, make sure that you start at a lower level, maybe negative 10 or negative 12. Also, look at the transition you're doing and use that to think about how you'll create that sound design. So if you have a very glitchy sound effect, think about getting creative with maybe like walkie-talkie static, 
some type of glitch. Don't just add a whoosh because your mind expects to hear something based on what you're seeing. And so if it's not matching up, then you're subconsciously going to think something's off or something doesn't flow well. So get creative and use sound effects that match up with the transition that you're using. Another tip, which I didn't go over, and I probably did it in a lot of these sound effects, adjust your pitch using in Final Cut Pro using just the, the pitch effect. Also add different effects. You can add like the alien effect in Final Cut Pro. You can add reverb by using cathedral, modest cathedral, large room, big room, small room. There's all these effects in Final Cut Pro. If you're a Resolve user or a Premiere user, you'll have this as well. It just will be maybe reverb or a different name. And those will help to kind of make your sound effects sound the way that you want. And that is it, guys. If you enjoyed this, if you liked this, let me know that you did in the comments. It helps me out, it helps the video out. And and maybe I'll make more of these sound design tutorials if this is something that you liked. And hopefully I will see you next week. Have a great rest of your day.